And I don't think this is around here, but you can always get it online. My wife and I wrote a, a storybook, uh, you know, teaching about the Ice Age, but in story form. You know, suddenly you're transported to a cave in central Germany. And what would you do during the Ice Age? You'd live in a cave. You'd hunt woolly mammoths, cave bears. So you have, it's an adventure story while teaching about the Ice Age called Life in the Great Ice Age. And we wrote a sequel to that called Uncovering the Mystery of the Woolly Mammoth, which focused on the disappearance of the mammoths. It's a sequel to that. And I wrote the weather book, if you want to know more about weather. I focused in on storms. I love storms. And uh, in it, I do have sections on global warming, the ice age, uh, ozone hole, and things like this. And uh, I wrote an uh, in-depth study uh, with ICR. The frozen record. This is strictly about Antarctica and Greenland. How do we explain those ice cores that go down there? And they claim that they can spot annual layers going down for 110,000 years. Great, uh, much greater than our time scale. It's just like they say re reading the rings in, a, in trees, in tree rings, to tell the age of the tree. Oh, there's a lot more to the story, believe me. <laughs> it works out at the top. You do see those annual layers. But because ice compresses, it becomes much more confused, and the amount of compression depends on what you believe about the Ice Age. If you believe it's millions of years old, that compression, by the time you get down near the bottom, it's paper thin. Well, our compression has not been enough, and so our annual layers are very thick. And so the wiggles they measure are storm layers. So <laughs> Some people thought that was an insolvable problem, but uh, when you put on your biblical glasses, it, it actually... It, it was solvable. And of course, I couldn't help but write something to my own neighbor. I'm from Washington State, so I see this stuff all the time when I go traveling out there, uh, the evidence for the Lake Missoula flood. And believe it or not, they believe there's these ancient ice ages from 100 and some odd million years ago to 2 billion. Uh, what, do we, what about those? Were they real ice ages? See, these are flood rocks. They see what they think are ice age uh, uh, rocks. and. Actually, they can be explained by gigantic submarine landslides during the flood. So anyway, that's it. And I think I finished early, didn't I? So we can have more questions probably. In other words, the seasonal contrast was a lot, was going to be greater after is what I, the way I see that, those verses. But as before, it does say we had seasons. And it's in interesting, you can show that we had seasons because I've looked at a lot of paleo uh, flora and, and fossil trees, and they have tree rings. And you form tree rings two ways, either by a hot and cold seasonally or a dry period and a, and a wet period. So, and, and even that's a seasonal contrast. So there is evidence of seasons before the flood. The question is, there, there, uh, during World War II, eight aircraft, I think uh, two different types, were forced to land on the Greenland ice sheet trying to fly to England, and they landed on the southeast Greenland ice sheet. And... Um, about 10 years ago, I think, something of like that, uh, a, a guy decided, well, I'm going to, they destroyed most of these aircraft, World War II aircraft, so, but they, they, they existed still in the Greenland ice. He said, I'm going to go get those. So he thought, well, in fact, I talked to them. They were putting it together after they brought it up out of the ice in Middlesboro, Kentucky, and I went through there. When they were still constructing it, it's called Glacier Girl, and it's, and it's flown in uh, air fares and this sort of thing. And I asked him, how deep did you think the ice was before you got up there? And he said, 30 feet. <laughs> it ended up being 275 feet down. Wow. And it was uh, quite a, a feat to go down there. And, and I guess they kind of melted a hole down there. And then they, they had to take it apart and take it up. They could only get one out. And by the way, it was three miles down from where they landed. So what, what, what's what? going on? Well, you know something? They never knew that it was an area of heavy precipitation in southeast Greenland. But it's just a bullseye area. It's only in that area because they got a lot of precip measurements in Greenland, including the top. The top only gets that much in pure ice a year, uh, 22 centimeters. Um, so it's just a bullseye. And it's close to the ocean. It's close to the Icelandic low. So it makes sense that that would be an area of heavy precipitation, but it's only a local area of heavy precipitation. That, that's all. But it gives you an idea that if you suddenly melted the ice, down and the ocean warmer, how much precipitation would fall on Greenland uh, with, with, at a lot lower elevation and with warmer uh, 
water and closer to the ocean, you'd have rapid glaciation of Greenland. So that's what that, that, those, that means. Next question. Yes. The question is, if you have volcanic ash and aerosols, very fine particles up in the stratosphere, and moisture, would the moisture bring it down? No, because the stratosphere is above the troposphere. You, 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 weather doesn't penetrate up there, except strong thunderstorms sometimes penetrate up in the th into the stratosphere. They're separated. So, and by the way, with, you would probably have more low clouds, uh, and, and they found out low clouds cause a cooling effect, so you'd have an extra cooling effect there. But there's probably a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere during the ice age. But if you don't have enough, if, if your sunshine is less, the effect of, of the greenhouse effect would be less if there's more carbon dioxide. And by the way, I'll show you tonight that carbon dioxide is a minor greenhouse effect, and it's, and it's uh, the effect is greatly exaggerated. This is in the literature. I'm going to tell you just exactly what the literature says, the scientific literature. So, yes, back. Uh, dinosaurs, from what we can indicate from Genesis, and there's only 50 kinds of dinosaurs, by the way. You need 100 of them on the ark. Practically all creations believe they are on the ark because they breathed there and lived on land before the flood. But then why didn't they propagate? Well, probably because of the, of the climate being too cold. But they probably did, a, did some in probably the warmer areas. And uh, they probably didn't go up too far north. And uh, so they pro that's probably kept their, their populations very small. And why man could probably kill a lot. And there's, there's a huge amount of legends of dinosaurs or dragons, they call them, and uh, in mythology. So, I, th I believe the Ice Age did have something to do with their demise, but they lived mainly in the south. It forced them to stay at the lower latitudes. That's the best I can do on that. Okay, uh, any more questions? Yes, the question is, uh, what about the Middle East and uh, Egypt and Israel? Uh, the patriarchs today, did some of the events, can they be explained by the Ice Age? You know, that's a very intriguing area. Um, it, it's interesting that it says in Genesis that, um, that the drought was in all the earth or something like that. Wasn't that the wording, something like that? And people say, oh, that's an example where all doesn't mean all. There's a, some examples of that, even though in, in Genesis 6 and 9 about the flood, there's... 30 references to the global flood being huge. I mean, so it overwhelms this, this way out. But that one in particular could be true <laughs> because at the end of the Ice Age, you had massive drought because it was cooler and drier because we had more sea ice, so we had less evaporation. So winters were a lot cooler. And so the, it was a drought and the animals were dying. And that was about the time of Joseph probably. And maybe that's what caused the drought. So really, maybe all the world wasn't a drought. So that is an accurate statement of, of the whole world, instead of being just a regional term. And, you know, is there's, a, there's a case where, what, Abraham and Lot, Lot looks down into the Dead Sea area and it says it's, what, well watered? Water well, you know, because there was a lot more water vapor during the Ice Age, much more evaporation, it would be wetter all over the earth. That's why we had the wet deserts. And so that can be why it was probably wet during that time. Other people think it's irrigation, but maybe that's, I don't, I don't necessarily think so. And so a lot of people lived down there because it was, was cooler, I mean cooler summers, and, and wet, wetter. And so it was lush and green. And by the way, it's, here's another interesting thing. Um, the locations of Sodom and Gomorrah and the other three, three cities down there, they always thought that they were covered by the southern Dead Sea. But they have found, archaeologically, uh, cities right at the base of the mountains, above the Dead Sea. And during the Ice Age, we know that the Dead Sea had a lot more water in it because there's shorelines higher up. So during the late Ice Age, uh, or during the Ice Age, it would be going down. So that would probably be about the level uh, right at the edge of the, 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 where the, the steep terrain, a couple hundred feet above the Dead Sea, where the, the, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah would be built. And that's where they find these cities archaeologically, like uh, they're named differently, but they show that they've been burned from the, outs, uh, from the top down, and they, and, and they have lots of grain, and it showed that it was a rich culture down there. So 
lot of things fit that, that, that instead of building, they probably built the city at the edge of the Dead Sea, which was higher altitude at the time. And so the current, since the Dead Sea has dropped, these cities would be higher up where you find these archaeological sites today and not at the bottom of the Dead Sea, which probably was never uh, exposed. My time has run out, but there's more question and answers coming up. So what do we take, a 10-minute break? And then we have question and answers.